Now, Greece and the Greek Isles are in a lot of people's bucket list. And one of the things that keep a lot of people from coming is, you know, the cost. But we're going to share with you in this video a way that you can actually enjoy Greece, see what you want to see, and what it would actually cost you to do it. It's no secret to those that know me that Greece is my favorite country in the world to visit. And the Greek islands are something I think everyone should experience at least once in their lifetime. Traveling the Greek islands can be a little expensive, but if you do it correctly, you can still do it on a budget. The best time to visit this island, in my opinion, would be during April or end of September to October. In April, you have Easter. You have all the flowers blooming. It's not a desert island yet. It's still green and beautiful. However, most of the tourists have not arrived. So you still have out of season prices for Airbnbs, for hotels, for rooms to let. You also have restaurants that are open that are not catering to the tourists and basically trying to make as much money as they can during the season. We're on the island of Milos. We've been here for two months. We have one month left to go and we're house sitting. That for us is a way for us to travel around the world uh, on the budget that we have. We use trusted house sitters. We'll leave a link for that in the description. Check that out. That's how we got this one here. And honestly, it was not difficult. Your lodging, it's not only gonna double, it's gonna triple and quadruple in the prime season. A Airbnb, a nice Airbnb, can be had in the off season here for anywhere from, I've seen them as low as $25, on average $40 to $50 a night in the off season. Prime season, those exact same places start at $250 and go up from there. Consider visiting a Cafe Neon or a Taberna or even just a little coffee shop. You'll find delicious food anywhere you go. Okay, so we've come up to Plaka and we're gonna hit our favorite spot for lunch today. Uh, it's uh, Traverna, that's what they call it. The Cafe Neon. Cafe Neon. So, don't really have a real menu. It's more of just whatever is fresh that day and whatever he's cooked that day is what you get. But it's a lot of fun and the owner is awesome. So, let's check it out. Hello! <laughs> oh, no. What you like to eat today? Well, we start with wine. Oh, already out. Already. See, look at that. Already. Look at that. Already, already here. Very delicious meat. Okay, yes. 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 And you try? Have you ever tried cocorette? I don't think so. You, you must try it. We we'll try a little. A little. A little. Except this. I said you the okay. plate. Okay. We'll okay. try. You know, you just meat sounds good and meat. whatever you decide. Okay. Don't worry. You the expert. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you very much. The name is Karodromos. It's a cafe neo. You can drink wine, uso, chipuro, beer. We, we have Mercedes. You're beautiful. <laughs> we love you. Thank okay, you. Thank for you. Everything. Thank you very, very, very much. Yes. Thank you. Definitely the best place in, uh, on Milos to eat lunch. You won't be disappointed. Also, if you don't mind cooking for yourself, 
get an Airbnb. Food prices here are incredibly affordable. For two people, $100 a week can feed you quite well, including some wine. Food, oh my, the meats here. I've never tasted beef and pork anywhere near what I got here. The vegetables, wow, I had forgotten what a real tomato tasted like until I had a Milos tomato. Getting to and from the island, you've got a couple of options. Well, you can private boat, and if that's how you're getting to the island, well, you don't really need to watch this video. But since you're here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We'd appreciate it. The other ones are the ferries and flying. Now, if you've got a limited amount of time to do the islands and see what you really want to see here, grab the flight. It's roughly about the same as using the ferry to get here. Few dollars difference. Book them in advance. They're great. There's multiple flights a day onto the island in the season. There's one a day in the off season. Same with the ferries. There's one a day in the off season, multiple in the busy season. In the busy season, those ticket prices double. So what's a $40 ride in the winter is a $90 ride in the summer. To get around this island, you either need to rent a car or a quad or use the local bus system. It does have several stops at pretty much everywhere you'd want to see. Most of the beautiful beaches here have a bus stop right next to them. While you're here on Milos, most of the land-based activities are free. The beaches, hiking the hills for the best views and sunsets, exploring the history of Milos, at the Venetian castle, numerous churches, and the Roman amphitheater. Wandering the beautiful streets and alleys. The only activities that we have done here that cost were the catacombs for two euros and the archeological museum for only two euros. However, many of the best beaches are only accessible by boat. Consider a half day or a full day boat tour of the island. I'll put a link of our preferred site, Get Your Guide, in the description. We book all of our excursions through them and have never been disappointed. Finally, consider a hike to Sikia Cave. It is an amazing half day hike with mesmerizing views, ending at a cave with a collapsed ceiling that you can climb down into for the best swimming and picnic area on the island. Wear appropriate shoes. This is a mid-level hike. Not overly challenging, but probably not for granny or small kids. We hope that you have enjoyed this video. If so, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to this channel to follow along on the rest of our adventure. It was good to see you.